Go ahead and uh, call this meeting to order. Appreciate everyone being here on this beautiful evening. It's been a really pretty day. I'm glad we dodged a bullet the other night on this weather that we had coming in and uh, Lord watching after us. Uh, before we get started, uh, Robert, would you lead us in the uh, invocation, also invitation, and also the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? We. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with thankful hearts, as always, to uh, be blessed as we are to live here and to enjoy the life that we have. And Father, we just pray tonight that you would bless those who did see some uh, rough weather yesterday, Lord, some things that happened. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you would be with those who are fleeing that country, trying to find a place to get out uh, and to get into where they can be taken care of. Those that are taken care of them, Lord, we pray for them that they would have the means and the strength. Lord, it is some of the things that we cannot imagine. We've never gone through and we pray we never do, but we, we're seeing it uh, happen on our TVs. And we just pray that you would be with them. Lord, be with our nation, be with our leadership, because uh, we just don't know what's coming tomorrow, but we know that you're in control of tomorrow. So bless our meeting here tonight. Bless our community, our county, our city, our schools, our businesses, and everything, Lord, that we have. It makes this home. Just put to it your blessing. We give you the praise in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Robert. This is a regular scheduled meeting of the Dade County Board of Commissioners, which takes place in the same, on the first Thursday of every month. Proper notice this meeting was given to a legal order in the Dade County Sentinel and has been posted in our hallway. Uh, at this time, I do need a roll call. Mr. Lowry? Here. Hartline? Here. Mr. Gall? Here. Bradford? Here. And Chair is present. We do have a quorum. Does anyone want to come up and talk to us tonight? Uh, pertaining to our work session. Welcome to come up. Audrey, were you holding your hand up? You can. You can come up here. It's, it's whatever you want to do. No, you come up here. We'll take and see. Well, it, it's good news. Good. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to sponsor, we, the Bank of Day, is going to sponsor a community shred day so that people who have secure information and all that and don't have a way of getting, if you don't live out in the country and can't have a burn barrel or whatever, uh, we're going to do that on Saturday, May the 14th, and it'll be from 9 a.m. till 12. Yeah. And it is free for our community. We'll pay for it. We'll be there those hours. And we ask that people bring no more than five boxes of shred material paper, please. And we don't mean refrigerator boxes, just normal boxes of shred paper. And we'll be glad to do that. It's with a company that guarantees the security of it and all that. So will we'll they shred on site? It'll be like a big truck. We will and they'll be shred on, it. Yes, it'll be on site down at the yeah. at the bay, not yeah. the drive through, but yeah. down at the growth shopping center. And just come on down, line up, and we'll take care of that for you. Because okay. I think these days we're finding there's a big need for something oh, like yeah. that. So we're going to be doing that for the community at least this one time and maybe again yeah. later this year. Okay, good. That's All really right. And so we'll send out the information and everything. But again, it's going to be on Saturday, May the 14th uh, from 9 a.m. to 12. Yeah. So everyone out there that might not understand what you're talking about, if you've got any personal old paper, papers that you really want to get rid of, that you don't want to just throw in the garbage and go right. to the landfill or you don't want to burn, if you'll take it down there, they, you, up to what, five boxes, yes. and they'll, they'll run it through a shredder and it'll be gone. You know, you and don't have to worry about anyone getting any information. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So okay. you don't have to worry about it being carried off and, mm. and done so. You're not going to take any tires or anything like that? Just. Uh, <laughs> Well, I don't know. Well, Many people don't show up with paper. We might take tires. That's the week before. Put them in the bottom of that box, and then the paper is on top. All right. Thank you. That's good. That's really good. We appreciate you in the bank, bank thank of day there. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Anyone else? If, okay, come on up. <laughs> Do what now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, as many of you know, my in-law's house burned down last Friday. My mother-in-law was had very, very minor injuries, but my 16, now 16 month old son had first and second degree burns to his body. Uh, so medical bills will be coming in uh, and they need help rebuilding and the price of lumber that's going up is going to be expensive to do. So someone got in touch with me yesterday about a good fund fundraiser idea about doing a cruise in and we've already reserved the Veterans Park area to be able to do it. Um, trying to get some vendors coming in. I've already got, I think it's 30 or 40 people so far that want to bring their cars in. Uh, trying to get in touch with an inflatable company so the kids have something to do and I already have one live music person that wants to come in too. So, but this will be uh, April 23rd, uh, two weeks from this Saturday. On Saturday, yeah. Uh, from 12 to 4, and it's a free event. We're not even charging people to bring their cars out because we're not having to pay anything either. So, and all of the funds, donations, uh, money, gift cards, clothing, uh, whatever people want to donate, it's all going to my in laws and towards my son's hospital bills. So, if anybody wants to come out, that event will be over here. Hopefully, the weather participates, but you know that could change. It. Uh, can you get some sizes where she can post it on our line online? Yeah, of, of your father-in-law, mother-in-law, and you know some of the clothes sizes and stuff that they need. We'll have all of that information. Uh, like I said, we just talked about this <coughs> yesterday. Yeah. So we've already got most of the stuff lined up for it, but we're also getting more information stuff in businesses that want to. Yeah. Uh, contribute to it. Uh, we'll have that on flyers as well. But hopefully, in the next, uh, hopefully by Monday or Tuesday, we'll have some flyers made and they'll be put up and it'll all be shared on social media. So, okay. anybody that wants to come out and help support them, that'd be great. Okay, good. Thank you. We'll write that down. And Carrie, you kind of work with them on it too to get it online on our website anyway to get it out there too. You know. Yes, sir. Uh, all right. Lamar, you want to go ahead and uh, okay. start, we'll start with you on the committee report, please. Our 911 call activity report is the EMS had 205 calls. The <coughs> fire departments had 290. Police, which includes Trenton, Day County, Lookout Mountain, and Georgia Lookout Mountain Drug Task Force, and Georgia State Patrol was 2,391 calls in a month for our police so a lot of calls for a total of 2886 so, pretty uh, busy pretty busy I mean, that's been a, that's a lot a lot of calls for police but mm. on our storm shelters number one alex told me today that i think he said tri-state electric if i remember right tri-state tri -state electric is laying the lines in the ground and getting everything ready to hook up because Georgia Power won't set the pole, run the line and hook to it until they're done. But that hopefully would be done in the next week or two. Uh, the storm shelter at Rising Fund was set last week and the interior work should begin soon. And storm shelter number three, which is at Davis, the, uh, the work and the prep, the, the dirt work is uh, scheduled to begin real soon, hopefully this next week weather pending of course as like always with construction uh, they rode around with billy yesterday and we we toured uh, murphy's hollow road and they've they've done a lot of work <coughs> on that road ready to pave this i didn't get the exact footage, but it's close to a four mile road and uh, that's one of our roads that when the interstates back up these trucks now have found the gps they find them roads and they're taking them down them that holler and if you if it's hard to imagine but they're, they're tickled to get the road paved they're already worried about the speeders <laughs> and they're turning the trucks but that nearly comes with it, everything you get so the striping uh, creek road where i live on the creek road was completed uh, probably two weeks ago they still got to come back and put reflectors down the center line of it was something we've never had before we're going to have now it's really 
really nice. It's a curvy road with a lot of places with no shoulders for the cars. We've had cars to drive off there. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. And we also toured Sales Lane. That's the one that we, that's going to be, both of them, Murphy's Hall will be first, I think, right at 10. Be May, uh, May and, or June at the latest that we'll start that. So he's and they may possibly go ahead and do the, you know, that because that's right with the shop. We always like to do a short road and <laughs> and get the pavement and everything working before we get on a big road like that. So they probably, Norm Billy, would probably go over and make a run all the way down and do that and make sure everything's mm -hmm. tuned up right. So, but yeah, because that's, that, that's, that's probably, probably not even a half a mile. Is it? Nah. And this one's pretty close to. It won't take too much miles. to do that. Murphy Hall, and of course, Ted was talking about the T spots and the need for paving. I mean, uh, everybody I've run into now that we've been, they finding out that Murphy's Hall is going to be paved, and when's my road going to be paved? Uh, I mean, I, and I've had, and they're big roads too. Well, some of them are. Dave, Dave Brown's not real long, but it is a good size road. Cloverdale, that's one of them. Higgs Hall Road. And, North Sligo, Dugan Loop, they're after, they've been after us to widen and pave that road for a while, but we have to we have to do what goes around what we can with what we have. And so the T-Splash would, would be handy. And another thing on the striping on the creek road, we just have two yellow lines <coughs> down the center of the road and we'll have the reflectors. We don't have white lines. And I've got calls about that said, what are they gonna do white lines? Well. The law says that we had to have at least 20 feet, no, right, 10, 20 feet of pavement before you can have white lines, and we got 18 or less in on the creek road. So those are those are stuff you know. T spots could help us out with widening that road to where we could have. When I was younger, <laughs> I didn't realize how important them stripes were, but as I get older and it's raining, those stripes are very important, you know, to making sure you stay on the road got some good news and bad news about the internet <laughs> bad news first Murphy's Hollow was supposed to be hopefully be uh, constructed by midsummer but they they kind of said it back now I hadn't talked to Adam Austin about it yet but they were running the fiber optic line down Sand Mountain and somewhere near Murphy's Hollow they copper thieves cut it in two looking for copper well guess what there's no copper <laughs> mountain fiber in a fiber line but that it's a big setback a big cost for the telephone company by cutting that line in two so if anybody knows anything about it we'd, we'd appreciate knowing about it uh, the wild woods where i live and you've heard us talk about it time after time we have no internet uh, Creek Road, Polk Creek Road, Old Birmingham Highway, we have nothing. They <clears throat> did get the property to build a, a hub, I call it, on to where they can do a build out for the for Wildwood now. So that's moving forward and I, I'm really glad to hear about that. So that, can, that concludes my Okay, Mr. Hartline. At the sports complex, we've got rec baseball and soccer started. We had 21 games this week in baseball. We had 16 games in soccer. Um, on field four, they finished the fence. Field four is the field that's behind Station M Shop. They, um, we extended that field out using the dirt that came off of County Road 6, trying to save, we save taxpayers money there. We've got a tournament April the 29th and 30th of this month, and we've already got 15 teams confirmed for that. Kerry's got some pictures from the other night. You got multiple pictures, Kerry, mm -hmm. from where they had a middle school ball, and I'm, I'm assuming that's where a lot of these 21 games come from at the ball fields. I got a phone call. And uh, they said the parking lot was completely full in the front, down the side, and they was parking on the road that goes down beside where Stacy's shop's at. It was backed up, there's no doubt. I mean, you can see the cars there. And 
that's our flyer we've got out for the tournament this the 29th and 30th is this month. So with, with us having already 15 teams, I don't see any reason that, that tournament will not make. As far as electrical inspections or permits this month, Stacy said we've had 44 electrical permits just in March. Yep. That's all I've got. All right. Mr. Kyle. Well, reporting on our splice intake this, this month was down uh, about 6,000 from last month, but it's the best March we've had in a long time. March is usually the lowest uh, month we have, and it's still 264,312. I know we mentioned T-Splice here a lot tonight. Ted mentioned it in, in our workshop. Lamar just mentioned it. Uh, it is a fair way to do things, and when we look at Splice and what it brings in, and realizing that we can kind of get an idea of what's going to come in through T-Splice to go directly to our roads, uh, to be able to pave the roads that everybody's wanting paved, uh, the city being able to pave everything they've got. Uh, there's going to come a time when we really can't talk about it as commissioners, but right now I urge everybody to call some of the counties that have it. Call Walker County, Call get, get a hold of some people in the state, because you can't find out who have passed these T-Splice uh, and uh, there's, there's been nothing but praise from their people of what they've been able to do. And, and we're sitting here talking about Murphy's Holler, some of the roads that uh, have needed it for a long time. Uh, the legislature is finished. They've gone home for the year. The laws that were passed were passed. Some failed. Uh, but uh, I know the, uh, and you can speak more to it, the right to farm, freedom, uh, free, freedom to farm. Maybe you can say something about that. That did pass. Uh, some of the things that uh, that they did, the mandates, funded man, unfunded mandates, uh, some of them are funded by the state, but they'll be long term and may not always be that way. Uh, but that has been done. I want to say uh, one thing right quick, and this is just a good news thing, because for the last two and a half years, uh, we've lived with COVID. COVID's still around. It, it's not gone. It's probably never going to go. But uh, just to show you where things are getting, the, the hardest hit industry probably in the United States or the world was the cruise industry. The CDC shut them down. You've got multi-million, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of ships that are sitting in dry dock because they couldn't go. They did, but were able to start up at the end of last year on some very limited cruises. Uh, my wife and I were able to go on a cruise last week to the Caribbean on Carnival. Once we got on, you took your mask off. It was a, there was probably 3% of the people on the ship chose to wear a mask. They do not make it. They recommend it, but there was nobody except their employees that did. You were able to go back to the buffets and dip your own food, except for bacon. They do dip your bacon, and uh, they only have bacon every other day, and they've done that for uh, ever since the pandemic started because of the price of bacon and it smells so good and looks so good, people fill their plate up with it when they walk off and leave half of cruise ships. So, you know, we need to start dipping this stuff out ourselves. So uh, but that's the only thing, really, that you didn't do yourself. So I'm saying that to say this. It's, a, it's good news because we're as close to back to normal uh, right now, for probably farther than we thought we would be, uh, just simply because they've done that. So that is some good news for the United States. For the people who like to cruise, like to travel, uh, things are opening up in, uh, you know, other travel. The airlines and some of the other countries are easing up. Uh, so people who like to visit and have the money and the means to do that. It's just some good news in the midst of all the bad we've had. For two years, we've lived with the bad, and I just want to share a little bit of good. So uh, we had a great time, and uh, the ship was uh, almost to capacity, over 5,500 people plus the crew. And the crew was like everybody else. They were 200, 200 people short uh, on crew members because they shut down so long. People didn't get back or they found other jobs in their countries. If you've ever cruised, there's very few Americans on cruise ships except those cruising. But the crew is made up. You, I mean, it's just a, it's a, a global thing when you get on there and listen to people and where they're from. But I just wanted to share that good news because it's time we had some. Thank you. Good. Well, good report. That wasn't a county trip, now, was it? I mean, it, was... it wasn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not sure I mean that. Uh, now I, put it, I put it on your personal credit card. 
<laughs> you would, because I don't have one. I don't use one. Well, I'm going to start with uh, announcing the tire amnesty, which is Saturday, May 7th. Uh, that's coming up really quick. Um, that's going to be 8 to 2, and uh, five tires per resident. Um, no large truck tires, tractor trailer tires, just standard uh, tires with uh, trucks and motorcycles. Um, must be cleaned, um, no water in them. Um, and hopefully the weather will uh, be well that day for us. Um, we had uh, 195 uh, road work orders, um, mainly just kind of catching up uh, with, with rain and, and prepping roads to, to stripe and, and pave. Um, I don't have recycling because um, we've had some employment change um, there, so hopefully we'll get that rolling on Monday or so and, and have that done for next month. Okay. All right. Give report. Um, I've got a few things to, um, to touch on. Number one is something I forgot tonight when we made the uh, presentation. And uh, if, if you've noticed these drawings on the wall, that was supposed to have been part of that, that presentation uh, to uh, Miss Baker and her group. Uh, Carrie, can you can you touch on that and tell us just, I know you, you were kind of instrumental in getting them uh, here and uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, the children and, and how this come about. So these, these are photos that are pictures rather that are drawn by our elementary school kids and our middle school kids to focus on child abuse awareness. This is Child Abuse Awareness Month, which is why most of our commissioners are wearing blue. Blue is the color to symbolize child abuse awareness. Um, also the pinwheels on the square are representative, are representative of um, the number of children who were helped through the services through Lookout Mountain Judicial what is drug, drug task force, I think. So um, 279 children used those services last year. And I would encourage those of you who are here to go take a look at these drawings. Um, I'm going to get choked up because some of those, I guarantee you, were drawn by um, survivors of child abuse. And when you see them, you'll know which ones they are. Um, so take a look. Those will be up here for a couple of weeks. So for those of you at home, if you want to stop by the administrative building and take a look at those, uh, maybe your child's artwork is up here or your grandchild or somebody you know who goes to church with you, stop by and take a look at, um, take a look at this artwork done by our local kids. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um. I also want to touch, uh, touch base on, I've had some people ask some questions. Uh, we know there's going to be some bridge work take place in the next year or so here. And uh, they'd mentioned to me, asked me about our county bridges. Well, our county bridges are inspected. It's every, I think it's every two years they come in. And the state, when I say they, they come in, they do a thorough check on all of our county bridges. bridges. And they also, they, they give us a, a itemized notation of any, uh, anything that needs to be repaired or fixed. And what we've, what we've done in the last 15, 20 years, we get right on it. Uh, we, uh, we, do, uh, we do all the, uh, the patching, if it's anything on the approach or whatever. In fact, that's what we've been doing for the past three or four weeks. We've had a crew, uh, I think they're at Cloverdale now, maybe finishing that up. They pumped some concrete in a, an area there that it eroded. But to, fortunately, our bridges in our county are really in good shape. I mean, now there's some of them don't really look like. We've got one at Cloverdale that I thought they would have turned down many years ago. I mean, it was built when the A models was going, and it was only, it's only so wide. But they, they structurally go in there, and they look at these bridges, and, uh, and that bridge right there, it, it passes every year. So, uh, so not to worry about our county bridges right now. Everything really is good. Uh, and, and uh, of course, as we've, you've heard us talk, and if you hadn't uh, heard us, we've, uh, the, there is some issues on some, on some of the state bridges here in the county. But that's that's um, 
uh, in the process as we speak. So, but I just want to I want to set everybody's mind ease on that. Uh, talking about the DOT, I don't really have a lot to report on the Sand Mountain project that's fixing to start up there. They they've had engineers in and out of here ever since our last meeting. Uh, they are coming around uh, 136 right there when you come from uh, from the um, Crossroads Hardware when you come off that that gap right there. Uh, the, the wall there, they've got some major issues there with it, with water. And, but as soon as I know something, if there's going to be a road closure, I, we'll, we'll let you know, uh, because that's a ma major artery. And what'll happen if they do close it to work on it, of course, as we said last uh, last month, um, that, that probably, well, the, the traffic will be detoured and our County Road 6 will, will probably take care of all of it for whatever time it takes to, to fix it. Um, also, uh, Something like I mentioned is every month we've had problems, but we've got some, just in the past three or four weeks, uh, the railroad has really gotten bad again about this blockage down here. They've had Church Street blocked for a week now, over a week. Uh, the Bank of Day, going through the Bank of Day, that one's blocked. They've got, and they're using that for kind of a parking lot of these of these cars. Now, then uh, they have had, actually Vanguard had been, has been blocked twice this past week, which they're never supposed to block it. Uh, and when that happened, uh, for those of you that don't live here in Trenton or travel with, we had we had tractor trailers backed up on both sides of the road trying to get in and trying to get out uh, for hours, uh, you know. And it's we've also got an issue not only with the city here but up on Steel Road. Had a call there and, and I got pictures here the day before yesterday because they documented. I do. Uh, that's a one way in, one way out. There's about 20 families living there. Uh, they were they were kind of separated from the the world for about four and a half hours the other day. Couldn't get in, couldn't get out, and fortunately, they fortunately this time they moved right when school the school bus started to run. Now uh, a month or so ago they did it, and we we had school kids being crossed through the train to get home. So we've got to we've got to do something. I've talked to Connor Poe. Uh, I've actually have called him twice since uh, day before yesterday. He's our government uh, liaison uh, with Norfolk Southern. He's in Atlanta. He hadn't called me back. He usually always calls me back. I mean within 15, 20 minutes. And I called him less than an hour ago, or an hour before this meeting, because I'd like to have something from him to pass on to our people to, to say, you know, what are they doing? Uh, because we're going to mess around. There's going to be someone that have a, have a heart attack or a cardiac over there on that side of the track, especially on these roads. Clark Street, it, it was blocked. It's been blocked many times. Uh, that's where Vanda lives, and there's several houses down there. That's one way in, one way out. And uh, and so it's we're going to mess around. We're going to have a really uh, bad situation and um, it's, we're, we're doing everything we can as a government uh, but they are if you really look at they're their own government they've got their own police and all and so they're pretty independent but hopefully uh, in the next week or so by this time next week uh, we'll have some kind of answer and I know there's a lot of mad people out there right now I know that about it um, the uh, Lamar covered our, on our storm shelters uh, we've, we're really glad that that's clicking along uh, he did mention that they are going to uh, going to start next week out there on Davis, and try to get that uh, get that dirt work down and get it clipped down, and so things are really looking good. This one here, uh, this one down at the full fields, I hope you know if you if you really look at what they what they're doing, what they've done, I hope in the next say 14 days, 10 or 14 days, that one will be up and we'll be say, we'll say okay, it's open, rising farm. Uh, we've got to put a safety tank fill line in. There's a little bit more to it than than there. They're they're actually hooking the sewer down here. We don't have sewer and rising farm, but uh, I'd say between two and three weeks on it because we've got a, we've got people working on it too. Uh, I had several calls uh, on both of them yesterday or when we had uh, when the first alerts started going out when they were talking about it, and so I got a feeling they're really going to be used. Uh, uh, they you know it's it's something that especially people that that live in. Uh, uh, modular or mobile homes, you know, that uh, whether it's a brand new home or not, uh, it, it's just going to, it'll give them a good feeling, uh, or if you live in any type of home, it'll give you a good feeling to know that you do have a place to go. When those alarms go off and those sirens, um, you know, whether you, and it's up to you, you don't have to use them, but at least you, you've got that option. And uh, these are real safe. Uh, they'll hold less, just a little less than 300 people, 268 or something like that. Uh, so. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking forward to, to getting these things up and running because, as bad as I hate to say it, it's that time of year, you know. And it, I had butterflies all day yesterday. My stomach, you know. I mean, uh, just you know, just did not knowing uh, exactly, uh, you know, what what it, what was going to whether it was going to go north or south. But but anyway, we, we've got that going our way. 
Um, we did have a, um, I attended our uh, health board meeting as Alex is on it also, uh, and um, we discussed several things, but one thing that they're, they're actually want us to actually uh, spread through the community is if you are on a septic tank, you know, you're having problems, you know, uh, regardless, you know, leakage or whatever, um, there is money out there to help you right now. Uh, and that's, uh, you, you know, it's, it's a program the federal government have joined with the state and um, you can come in the office in here. Um, Stephen, he's in our, uh, in our soil conservation person. Uh, it's handled through that office. And uh, I'm not sure, I think they pay, can pay up to like 75% of the repair. It's 40. Uh, is it 40? 40%. 40%. They, okay. were, they were just doing up to, but they are doing 40%. Full 40%. Um, and okay. I have used it. So, oh, really? Okay. Yes. And it is okay. very easy. Yeah. It's um, they, they sign you up. You get a quote, an official quote. It's wonderful. Okay. That's good. It's, so it's, they will pay for 40%. 40%. Okay. I will. Yeah. And it was... Yeah fill out the paperwork and a week later the check was in the mail that's good that's good so and as most of you know in, in the unincorporated part of the county which is a, the main part of our county we're we're on septic tanks septic tank fill line and so uh, only trenton and just a little bit uh, of the perimeter here but so let's keep that in mind everyone yeah it's a pretty wonderful yeah. thing yeah. and if you've got questions you can call or call me i mean i've got I keep uh, keep up with and also the uh, commission office Six five seven four six two five, and Carrie, you've got it posted too, right? And yes, what's that under? Is it under our like Dade County Commission, or is it under like the NRCS? Uh, it's on our very front page of our website. Okay. okay. And I'm sure most uh, anybody that you're using, if if you're using somebody that deals with septic tanks, they have the information yeah. too. Local people. Yeah. yeah. People that do the it, local the people have the. Yeah. <laughs> but I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, the uh, only other thing I wanted to mention is the uh, our joint comprehensive plan, and we did talk a little bit about that. But if you've not went online and, and, and actually fill that out, try to do that because it it uh, it really is uh, pretty interesting. You've got you know 16 questions or so, but that's what that's what things that's what our future is based on. We go by these things, you know, the five-year plan, uh, 20, 30-year plan, and so uh, you know don't be bashful. Go on, it's real easy. And uh, it all goes in, and because it does count, you may say, "Well, it don't make any. It does make a difference, you know." Uh, so try to do that if you if you can. And there again, that's on. Carrie's got that where you can go on, online and, and do that. Have y'all got anything else you want to bring up before we go in? That that, me? that that you was just talking about about the septic. You talking about the limestone valley? Limestone valley. All right. On that, the only thing that you need to know is it's if you drain to Lookout Creek, part of Sand Mountain on the bluff side, you can qualify for it. But if you live on a watershed that goes away from Lookout Creek, you can't it does you can't apply for it. So you have to call and just let them know, give them your address, and they'll let you know if you're on the right watershed or not. What where does that break at? Uh, I mean, I mean, because most of it would come this way. The only other thing it would do would be go toward Tennessee River. So it had to be out there about Hortline Road. No, it? right on the bluff. It starts and then it goes out. Cool. It goes into Alabama through County Road 89. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I really, you know. But 90% of look out, 99% of look out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it is. I mean, the only part that doesn't is on the out. We've got one little area at Head River, the little river for the East Fort, whatever they call it, but it goes and goes toward the other valley over there. But that's, uh, yeah. But it, either way, I mean, it's good. That's good information. Yes. And this is where it can be found on the website. It's on the home page. So okay. That's very okay. All right. All right. All right, let's uh, move on to our appearances. Uh, Mandy, he's our manager of our Day County Public Library. Ms. Hayward. Thank you for having me again. Mm -hmm. I do appreciate being able to come once a month and share what's going on at the library. <coughs> so before I get to what I sent over to Carrie, I just wanted to mention the library is also in partnership for the um, Child Abuse Awareness Project, and this is actually an art contest. There were five um, projects that were selected that are hanging up at the library. So in addition to these, if the community comes and wants to look at these, they can walk on over to the library. We actually have a contest. And those um, projects are on our wall. And you can vote for your favorite one. And the winner will be recognized. And um, so we encourage everybody to have a look at those. Hmm. Um, second, uh, I heard it right as I went to use the restroom. Yes, the library has paper copies of the survey, the community survey. Um, Ms. Donna Street dropped them off for me with me today. So 
So we have the uh, scan code, and we also have paper copies for anybody. And I don't know if it was mentioned before, but she said, me, many of you fill that out. And I was like, well, you know, I don't live in Dade County. She's like, oh, but you work there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if everybody's aware, but even if you work in Dade County, you should fill out one of those surveys. Am I right on that? Yes, you're right. Okay. So, um, yeah, we've got those surveys. Just come ask us at the, at the counter, and we'll get you one of those. And now we'll move on to the library business. Um, this is our calendar for April. And I don't know if you can see over there on the right, but um, there's 11 programs that we've got in the month of April. We have so much going on. Um, it's really exciting. I'm, I'm not going to mention each and every one because I'm going to try to be quick tonight. But I encourage you to go to the CHRL website. Our calendar is on there. We have paper calendars. Um, at the library, you can come get one. Um, we always have everything posted around the library. Um, we have 11 events in April. And one thing that we're really proud of, our new guest, Spencer, uh, he has programmed something every week for every age group. So that's really exciting as well. So every week there's something for every age group, from preschoolers to elementary school to teen. And um, we've had a lot of activity in the library. If you have come during any of our programs you've seen, we have a lot of activity happening. Um, the other thing I want to mention, this is not on our calendar, but we have um, been working with the schools, and we have four school visits planned for April. Our first school visit was last Friday. Our next school visit is tomorrow. So I have some pictures of some of our um, middle school and high school students that came, and we read a book. We had a craft. They got a tour of the library. They got a behind the scenes where we get the books from the other libraries around Pines. Um, it was a great day at the library. So um, next, the pop-up job fair. Uh, Alliance for Day put on a job fair at the high school and we were privileged to be able to have a our Spencer, who is also our youth education coordinator, he's our pop-up coordinator as well. He had a pop-up library at the, at the job fair and he had so many young people interested in coming over and talking to us, not just about, hey, there's some job opportunities, would you like to work at the library? Um, we have a lot of really incredible online resources for young folks looking for employment. We have um, a cover letter and resume uh, templates that they can use that helps them with their wording when they're trying to apply for jobs. We've got various um, practice tests for the electrician's exam, getting into college, getting into nursing school, all sorts of exams on some of our online platforms that's free with a library card. So that's Spencer. Um, we have two partnerships that I wanted to highlight. Uh, one of them is with the Cub Scouts. The Cub Scouts came in and prevented, uh, presented a program on fishing. We had, uh, let's see my notes here. We had 15 participants, but we had 30 people total come and do, they had, they had set up different um, stations. They talked about local fish in the area. They had practice uh, casting and um, they talked about uh, trips that kids can go on uh, to practice their fishing. So that was a lot of fun. And we had our 4-H. Uh, Ms. Cunningham came and did an incredible program on archaeology. We had 29 participants, which was, I mean, blew us all away. 29 participants that were children, but we had a total of 47 people come to the library and participate with this event. And she did an incredible job. You can see some of the pictures of our meeting room was to capacity. She did a cookie excavation that obviously had everybody, you know, engaged and activated throughout the program. So uh, they're going to, if you looked at the, they were on our calendar. She's going to be doing a teen program in anthropology later this month. And she's coming back in May to do two programs, another ch a children's program and another teen program in May. Also, what was not on our calendar were the extra community events that we have going on. Those school visits, we have four of them. We've got a book signing. We have a local author who just published a book. Mr. Ken Pennington is going to be signing his book and doing a book reading on the Rock Eaters. On, that's April 12th. The IDA is going to be using our meeting room on the 18th. We have two board meetings, not only the Dade County board meeting, but the regional library board meeting is going to be at our facility this month. And, newly minted, the election debates will be held at the library on the 26th. So, uh, I think, from what I've heard, that has always happened there, and it's a big event, it's televised. 
So they're going to be set up in the library again on the 26th. All right. Oh, there's our author, Ken Pennington, The Rock Eaters. Um, he has a little bio up there. Uh, so please come support our local author. Uh, buy a book, get it signed, and listen to him tell a little bit about his history, and um, he's going to do a little reading from the book. I'm so excited about this, y'all. This is our teen room renovation. Um, and there's Jared and one of the trustees. They did an amazing job. They were in and out. They cleaned up. It was amazing. What they did is they took out a countertop that was not really being utilized. And um, they lifted the lights. They cleaned it up. They painted it that blue. We're going to be adding two more ranges for books. And those ranges are being painted for us at Lafette. And they will be installed hopefully by the end of this month. And the reason we need two more ranges, let's go to the next slide, is books. Uh, one of the things I was tasked with when I came on board is making sure we are committed to buying books every month to add to our library. And what we noticed in our team room, even after we did our weed, is we just didn't have room for any more books. And we definitely want more team books in there. So um, the great news is the state increased our per capita money from 40 cents to 60 cents. So that's going to give us an extra $3,236 this year to purchase books. That's amazing. I'm really excited about that. We also have some state tech money that we were awarded. And I just put a few of the things that we're thinking of uh, proposing. We have to have that in on the 15th. It goes to the region to um, approve. But we've got an iPad station for the children's area. We've got a new Windows PC and a... Um, and a swivel monitor for the history room, uh, Nintendo Switch accessories for our Pokemon Club, which is one of our uh, new teen children activities, and we're potentially looking at a new 3D printer. Ours was one of the first. We were, you know, one of the stalwarts for that, but it's a little outdated, and we're having trouble actually getting it to finish the projects that we've had a few patrons asking us to do. So we're looking at purchasing a new one of those with that money, and some STEM and robotic activity kits are all on our wish list. Dun, 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 last but not least, we have two job openings at the library. Longtime library assistant, April, resigned. Um, last week was her, last Thursday was her last day, and um, she was an asset to me. She helped me so much as I transitioned into this role. And she decided after 27 years at the library, she was looking for a change. So she has moved on and we are looking to fill um, our lead cert position. So if you know anyone, the applications are online. They can also pick one up at the library. It'll be a part-time 29 hour per week. Because it is a lead cert position, the hourly rate is $11 per hour. And we already have probably five or six applicants, which is exciting. It's nice to be able to, you know, have a good choice when you're sitting down to interview. We'll probably be interviewing by the end of the month and hopefully have someone in here first to second week of May. And our second position is uh, Spencer, our youth education coordinator, would like a spring summer marketing intern. And he would love, he it has to be a high school sophomore, junior, senior from Dade County High School. And he wants somebody who's interested in marketing as a career. They've got to have a 3.0 GPA. And he's going to really, this isn't a fluff and stuff, oh, just kind of sit around in the library. He really wants to put them to work. And he has got some great ideas on marketing, social media. Um, he would be a great person to work under. So if you are interested, any of you teens, interested in coming to work at the library as a, as a marketing intern, um, you can find the full job description on the Facebook page. You can send your cover letter and resume to um, Spencer's email address, address spinnington at chrl.org. All right, I think that's it. Okay. That's it for the library. Thank you so much. Any I appreciate questions? it. Any questions? Okay. Good job. Good report. Thank All you. right. Well, Thank thanks you. again. I appreciate it. All right. All right. Miss Sarah Dyer and Laura Beth Cunningham. Well, we had a really big month of March, so we have lots of.
things to tell you guys. Um, here is the March newsletter. I gave you guys a copy of that last month, and then I've supplied you with the April newsletter so you know what's going on. Um, we've had quite a few people sign up for camp this year, and not just like Cloverleaf camp, but you know our senior extreme camp and things like that, so we haven't really had that much in the past. Um, earlier in the year, I applied for some camp scholarships through various 4-H foundations and grant programs, and I received four fully paid scholarships for Cloverleaf Camp at Rock Eagle that had been awarded to two boys and two girls from the DFACS program. Um, I partnered with Martha Baker and Family First Connections, and she helped me identify those kids, and they are super excited because they've never been out of the county, they've never done anything, so... I'm really happy that I was able to do that for them. Um, we also had two other scholarships that are going to a family that are able to send two of their boys to camp. So back in the beginning of March, I took three Day County 4 Hers to Rock Eagle for District Project, Project Achievement, and I brought back three first place winners. Mm. Um, Braxton Wood, he placed first in the Lamb and Meat Goat category. Liam Davison, first in Forestry and Wood Science. And his twin sister, Kerrigan Davison, she placed first in environmental science. And I was really proud of them. They worked really hard. They came to a session two and three times a week. They had dress rehearsals. Um, and it's always good to see when hard work actually pays off. So they were really excited. Craft night was a lot of fun as usual with lots of messy hands and smiling faces. That's when they painted the little things. And surprisingly, it wasn't that messy and they had a good time. Uh, Craft night for April is actually tomorrow night, and we're going to make a squid out of toilet paper rolls. That'll be interesting. Yes, <laughs> it will be. Yeah. Um, movie night this last month was my most successful so far. We had about four to five families show up to watch Home on the Range, um, and this month we're going to be watching Chicken Little, and that's not tomorrow, but the following Friday. We also kicked off our registration for our annual Chick to Chicken project. We had 13 students register this time, many of them first time participants and new families that have recently moved into Day County. Um, we tried to pick a more unique chicken this time to see if it would attract more kids to participate. I think it did. Um, we chose this blue star hen, which is very beautiful, and they're big and fluffy, and they're supposed to be. They call them like a gentle giant, so I really think the kids are going to enjoy them, and they'll obviously be more pets than laying hens, but I'm excited about them because I'm getting something. And we will remind you when it's time in November for that chicken show and sale because we'd love for you guys to come out and support the kids as they present their three best hens to the judge, and then you'll have the opportunity to buy those hens or a couple of them from each kid if you want to and take them home. They'll be ready to lay by December um, Christmas time for some eggs. So we're very excited to kick that off. We'll do some summer programs as well for those kids. Um, and we have had, like Laura just mentioned, as you guys have mentioned, lots of people moving to the area. We're seeing new, brand new families coming from out of state that have moved here um, that are taking um, advantage of the opportunities we offer in 4-H. So we're glad to welcome them and we are really excited they're diving headfirst into these programs. Um, so on the it's not on the screen before we get to the ag part of it, or excuse me, the adult ag programming side of things. Um, we also hosted our livestock showing interest meeting the last day in March, um, right before we submitted this presentation on Friday morning. So that's not on here, but we had the biggest turnout we've also had yet in that program, which is really neat. Um, I'd say we had about eight or nine families there, so we're expecting a few new livestock show team members this year. Um, so if you've been around for a little while, you've heard me talk about the DAID grass class. Um, DAID stands for DAID Agriculture Developing Excellence. We're kicking off a new series as the grass class wraps up in May. We're starting the Greater Gardener series. Um, so this is for any and all that want to join us. It is $25 per person. I do need you to come in advance to that first night so that we can have everything ready for you. So Friday, April 22nd, if you're watching at home, is the deadline to come by our Ag Center and get signed up for this program. So then the following Tuesday, the 26th, you can join us for the first night. Um, that first night, we will have our UGA Extension Home Garden Vegetable Specialist up here from Griffin. Um, he will be here to do that presentation. I'll bring in different gardening experts from UGA Extension throughout the 12-month program. So we're really excited to kick this one off. We can move on to the next slide. 
Thank you. Um, the beekeepers will be meeting at our Ag Center in April, April 18th. They always meet the third Monday of the month. And then our Cattlemen's Association is, is rotating back to Walker County this upcoming month. So on Tuesday, April 19th, we'll be in Walker County. We just secured that program topic and speaker today. So we will have Dr. Lou Strickland, who is the Extension Veterinarian from University of Tennessee, come down for a Vaccine 101 program. So I'm hoping when we promote this on social media, you know, they understand it's a cattle vaccine protocol, not COVID. So this is all <laughs> cattle focused. Um, little change in pace for some of our vaccine information. And then we are wrapping up that grass class series like I just mentioned. Our final meeting will be Monday, May 2nd. If you have not been coming, fill it because I know you've been real busy. Um, join us that night. We're going to have dinner for that program and a question and answer session with all of our previous program speakers. So it'll be a really good wrap up for the folks that have been registered and following along that program for the last two years. So that's all we got. And give us a call if you have any questions, need any help. Now is the time to be uh, thinking about your vegetable garden. So soil testing, water, hay testing, we offer all of that through our office. Okay. Any questions, comments? Good report, good job. Thank I appreciate y'all. Thank you. I have a question. How do you, how do you register for the gardening series? You do have to stop by because we can only take cash or check within our office, but if you stop by the office to make payment and fill out the form, then you can register for the series. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
the Welcome Center, we had a half a dozen people or so come in there, pick up the forms, and then bring them back to us. Uh, the QR code is also posted there if you want to do it online as well. So uh, stop by the, the, the Welcome Center. As you can see, we're, we're starting to trend up a little bit on visitor numbers. This is a little bit of a busy chart here, but it's, uh, you know, the weather's starting to get better. We're starting to see spring breaks, that kind of thing. So we're starting to see that activity pick up at the Welcome Center. Uh, we're pleased about that. Uh, next slide is coming soon. Uh, we have a lunch and learn scheduled for May the 5th, which will be our legislative update. And we have Jeff Mollis, our senator, and uh, Mike Cameron, our representative, that are going to be there and tell us about what took place in Atlanta in this last session. Uh, so bring our folks up to date. We have also have a, uh, launched a website because we took over uh, this from uh, uh, US 11 Antique Alley and we just launched a website and we're actually actively going out and talking with chambers. In fact, one of the chambers in Alabama, I can't remember which one it was, agreed to sign up. They, they're going to be part of that and we're already beginning to uh, post our businesses in the Dade County area. Uh, it'll be part of that. And I know Stacy, if you're still here, I, I don't see him. He left. I know that the, uh, we're going to be doing some things at the sports complex, have some space available down there as well. And we'd certainly make sure we advertise that as well. Um, that's my report for this month. Uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Any questions? George. What time is the lunch and learn legislative update? Uh, we're we're going to do that from probably 11.30 to 1. There'll be, there'll be more information coming out, but it'll be 11.30 to 1, I'm pretty sure. Thank you, George. Hey, Good thank report. You very appreciate much. all you do. Yes, thank you. Rodney Ross, you got anything you want to tell us, uh, anything going on with the fire departments? We have Rodney here. He's at every meeting, and he's their liaison uh, of the chiefs there. Uh, they have their own little association. And, you got anything that you need to maybe bring us up to date on? Or the only thing is the airbag that we purchased was supposed to be here around the 18th of this month. Okay. And we get a full hundred body of ours other When is the uh, the fish fry y'all have? I know I'm way off probably months, but I, I know that you know you, it slips up on you. But when when do y'all do that? Now you still doing it? I know I know COVID kind of. That's great. Good. That's good news. That that's another sign we're getting back to normal. Rodney, which is uh, kind of he's one of the people that's over that out of the New Salem fireworks there, there right now, and you say it's pretty well, like 90 percent, 99 percent. Y'all gonna do it? We are. We are gonna do it. So that that you heard it first here tonight, and uh, that's a big event. And it's it's one of the, it's one of the largest events we have in the county, and I have missed it. I know I know all of us have. So that's that's really good news. We appreciate. It. And also that fish fry that I'm talking about. Some of you have never heard of it, never been there, but let me tell you something. That's some as good fish as you'll ever eat. Um, it's really good. They have it on a like a Friday in the evening, and uh, be sure to put that on our website too when you're going to have it because it's a good a good event, a good evening to be there. And uh, and I also noticed a sign. I've missed it. I usually go up there. They have they're having a fish fry every Friday night at the um, the Catholic Church there in uh, New England. Uh, and I'm not sure what time uh, they start. You got it on? Is that on a website? Okay. On website. okay. Yeah. And I just, you know, usually we go at least a couple of times. That's good fish. It's good. Good. Uh, this is the last Friday. It is the last Friday. I think okay. so. Yes. Okay. Uh, they do that every year during during Lent. And but, all you know. proceeds go to local charities. Okay. Good. Very good. Very good. Okay. All right. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Okay. Let's do what, Melissa? The fish guys. You don't have to cook the fish. Oh, I know. Uh, okay, let's move down to uh, let's move down to our monthly finance report. Uh, Donna Street's not here tonight. She she did come to our comprehensive plan meeting day, but she's trying to take it easy. She's been kind of under the weather, and so uh, she'll be back here in another month or so and start giving her report. Uh, but Donna, let's go ahead and uh, and move down to our uh, monthly financial report, if you would. All right. As of March 31st, 2022, the general fund had a balance of $2,515,987. We had on hand uh, an investment $1,300,000 for a total of 
million eight hundred fifteen thousand nine hundred eighty seven dollars available in the general fund a federal asset fund us treasury has a balance of zero share special fund a balance of ten thousand eight hundred thirty eight dollars drug abuse education fund thirty one thousand four hundred twenty eight dollars supplemental juvenile services fund twenty seven thousand seven hundred thirty five dollars victim assistance fund $947, jail fund $8,999, federal asset fund, Department of Justice, zero, American Rescue Plan uh, $1,406,803, accommodations, hotel motel tax is $231,140, employee, employees flexible spending account has a balance of $24,221, and the payroll account has a balance of $90,974. In the old SPLOST remaining to 2015 SPLOST, the projects account has a balance of $232,370, and the debt services account has a balance of $4. Uh, 2021 SPLOST fund has a project balance of $8,349, and the proceeds account has a balance of $158,517. Uh, the next page, we have the <clears throat> Dade County income statement. As of February 28th, uh, 2022, the current month, for the current month of February, we brought in $1,041,517. We had budgeted $631,108. So we were in excess of $410,408. For the year to date, we have brought in $10,437,622. At budget, $9,724,980. So we were, again, excess of funds of $712,641. Expenses for the month uh, came in at $889,284. We had budgeted $972,285. So we were under budget $83,000. Here to date, we've spent $8,358,708. We had budgeted $8,661,000. So we were under budget for the year so far at $302,291. Uh, budget attained so far with about two thirds of the year gone, 66.67%. Revenues attained thus far was 79.41%. Expenses attained were at 63.59%. Local option sales tax for the month came in at $211,449.87. And special purpose local option sales tax collections came in at $264,312.43. So far in the new SPLOS, we have spent a total of $1,086,217. The lion's share of that was on uh, Public Works paving back in November. And the old SPLOS, the 2015 SPLOS, funds remaining there is still uh, tied to the uh, seven fire departments. So we're they're aware of that, they are working on um, coming up with a plan to expense those funds uh, soon. We, I think they had a meeting this past Monday night about that. And the Dade County Tax Commissioner's Office year-to-date collection has been, well, it is $4,523,704, and that's right at 87.04%. That's from July through February 28th. That concludes the report. I would like to say we have prepared the budget documentation for the worksheets. Um, that's a, a very lengthy process, but we'll be starting that process probably next week. Uh, Lisa Eubanks has already sent me her request. I asked for them. She was the first to get it, so I give her kudos for that. <laughs> and um, so we'll be getting a, you know about 50 different budgets underway and hopefully by the last week of April, uh, weather permitting after the storms the other night, it makes me nervous. But anyway, we'll have a budget prepared and uh, something present perhaps at the May meeting. Usually it's, it's mid-May before we work out the final glitches on the budget. 
And, um, but the state has finally approved the state budget, so it kind of gives us guidance as to where to go with our budget. That concludes the report. Okay. Any questions, <clears throat> Mr. Lynn? All right. If we don't have any questions, I will entertain a motion to approve our financial report as presented by Don Townsend. I have a motion to approve. Motion to approve is read. Okay, I have a second. Second. Oh. Okay, I got a second. Call the vote. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Hartline? Yes. Mr. Goff? Yes. Mr. Bradford? Yes. And Chair votes yes. Okay, motion passes. Robin, you got anything this week? Anything I don't, Mr. Chairman. Legal matters that we need to know about. Yes. Um, no unfinished business. Uh, I will, on, under, we'll call it new business or whatever, but uh, under the, um, on the North Dade uh, school land swap, we do have that going. Uh, Robin, I don't know how close we are right now as far, but it's getting, probably by next month, maybe we'll be able to, I know we've got to have, uh, don't, didn't you say we had to have a public meeting? A pu pu we need a public hearing before public we Public hearing, yeah. 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 And, and, I th and we're looking at the end, end of the month in April, and I'll get y'all the, the date. Okay, now. we'll we'll uh, you know, bring it bring it up to date, bring it up to date on that through our website, and uh, so we'll we'll do that. And uh, we'll school board will be here and, and have any, you know we'll address any comments that's made. But um, that'll be a good thing, be a win win for all of us you know, on that. So, um, all right. This is a regular scheduled meeting of the Dade County Board of Commissioners, which takes place at the same time, first Thursday every month. I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong one. The reading of the minutes of this last month, uh, last month's regular meeting and any special call meetings will not be required since all commissioners have been furnished copies in advance. The minutes are public record and available for review in our county commission office. The minutes are included in the consent agenda. This time, Mr. Townsend, if you'd go over our consent agenda, we will entertain a motion pertaining to that. We have approval of the agenda as presented, uh, the approval of the previous meeting minutes, the revenues, I'm sorry, the review of the personnel status report as presented, and the resolution R-21-22, appointment of member to the Industrial Development Authority to fulfill the unexpired term of Mr. Peter Stravelli, and that is Lisa Cable uh, for a period from April 7th through December 31st, 2024. And that's the current term. Resolution R-27-22, appointment of a member to the Industrial Development Authority to fulfill the unexpired term of Mr. Larry Case. That's Mr. George Williams. Again, April 7th, 2022 through December 31st, 2026. Resolution R-28-22. A reappointment of Donna Street to the Dade County Library Board of Trustees. It's a three-year term commencing July 1st, 2022, expiring June 30, 2025. Proclamation for Child Abuse Prevention Month of April 2022. A proclamation for Confederate History Month of Remembrance for Dade County Count for the month of April 2022. Proclamation Recognition of National Arbor Day by Tree City USA, April 29, 2022. Proclamation Recognition of National Donate Life Month, April 22nd, uh, April 2022. Uh, we have under Historic Courthouse Restoration Project as proposed by Mr. Jamie Blevins, uh, who's CMA of the uh, BCM Incorporated. Under <clears throat> Let's see. Re request for proposal number 2022-08 for mechanical, which is the H uh, heating and uh, air conditioning, is awarded to Reeves Heating and Air for a total of $169,028. Re uh, RFP 2022-05. Get this. Uh, RFP 2022-05 is uh, for the plumbing is awarded to Tri-State Enterprise. It's $46,935. RFP 2022-09 for the electrical is awarded to Lawson Electric for $123,085. And 
Then we have under approval for ARPA, which is the American Rescue Plan Act funds, uh, the RFP 2022-01 is the purchase and installation of a new generator at the Justice Building. And that is for Stowers Machinery Corporation. Uh, the cost of the generator is $76,163. Manufacturer is Caterpillar. And the cost of the automatic transfer switch is $20,174. Manufacturer is ASLO or AL, ASCO. I don't know. Anyway, uh, for a total of $96,337. And we have ordinance number 05-05-22, the second amendment ordinance prohibiting use of county resources to enforce gun restrictions or gun accessory laws in violation of state laws. It's a first reading only. And then 2022 internet intergovernmental agreement. Uh, this is as amended from last month's version, the version two, uh, for the Board of Education schools use of sports, county sports complex uh, for day middle school softball. And that's that completes the reading. Mr. Hartline's got a question here too, you brought up here to, on, under the um, approval of the uh, of the generator and at the Justice Building and all. It's got down here uh, RFP 2022-01. Um, purchase and installation of new generator. Now, is that purchase and installation? Yes. yes. Stowers is a name for both. The manuf I don't know. The, I guess the manufacturer of the transfer switch is 20174 and the actual manufacturer of the generator is Caterpillar for 76163 but the total is $96,337. Well, the purchase and installation. Just to yeah. purchase it, correct? Not installation. Well, that's installation too, because remember he said the warranty wasn't good. Okay. Yeah. The warranty wasn't good until they, that's had, right. until they actually fired up. And okay. Yep. Right. Yeah. That's why it's presented. I mean, it's purchased. We just want to be sure. Well, that first place said it included to start up and test. Yeah. So it had to be installed yeah. and started. Yeah. All right. That's good. Any other questions? Comments? If not, I entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented by Mr. Townsend. Do I have a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay. I have a motion. I have a second. I'll second. All right. Call a vote. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Hartline? Yes. Mr. Gall? Yes. Mr. Bradford? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion carries. Okay. We don't need an executive session tonight. Y'all got anything else you want to bring before the board before we adjourn? Okay. If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right, I have a second. Second. Mr. Lowry, Tom Boat. Yes. Court Yes. Mr. Gall. Yes. Mr. Bradford. Yes. Chair Boat, yes. Thank all of you for being here. Thank you, thank you.